All right, my friends, we're gonna put the whole issue of dairy fats, uh, C15 pentadecanoic acid, C17 heptadecanoic acid, and then the whole linoleic acid, polyunsaturated fat or seed oils, inflammatory thing. We're gonna wrap it up in a way that I hope is simple for you, okay? And I, I just, I'm a busy doc, so I don't have the time to go and put things on a board and do produced videos, but by the end of the way we explain it, with Einstein's everything as simple as possible, but not simpler, I hope that you get it. First of all, in terms of the blaming of linoleic acid and seed oils, since it's a predominant source of linoleic acid, uh, being associated with metabolic syndrome rise since the 70s, and therefore it is the seed oils causing the metabolic syndrome when we're not looking at the fact that the massive amount of extra, extra calories that we have been ingesting since 1970, over 500, this is 1970 to 2010, actually 2016, and I bet you that since the pandemic it's worse, but we have gone up by hundreds, of, we're talking like 600 calories essentially since 1970. That force alone, knowing that calories are a huge issue in metabolic syndrome, and in fact calorie reduction of non-essential calories is the most proven intervention in, in, in modern history from flies, Drosophila, to, to primate monkeys in the University of Wisconsin, NIH, National Institutes of Aging Studies, to reduce the risk of developing a chronic disease and prolong life. So we have a massive load of just calories at all. And in terms of quality, the fact that linoleic acid, a polyunsaturated fat, a plant-based polyunsaturated fat, these are the only essential fats, even though these dairy fats are called essential fats, they are not essential. We do not require them for life like we do for omega-3 to make neuronal sheaths and in our central nervous system. And essential fatty acids necessary for integrity of skin when it comes to omega-6. And not that we need a ton of these fats for them, I'm just saying they are truly essential. The fact that the calorie rise from them has been instead of refined animal fats and high like palmitic acid-based saturated fats, where our calorie increase has probably been less bad in terms of cardiovascular risk, but we still have excess calories, so we're still getting into the insulin resistance and diabetes uh, epidemic. So. The, the association of linoleic acid with reduced inflammation, with reduced cardiovascular disease, short chain in particular, I'm talking the plant-based linoleic acid, not, not, I, I'm not as clear, I think, of here getting it from animal fats uh, and long chain arachidonic acids, which thankfully human body is not very efficient at converting short chain uh, omega polyunsaturated fats into long chain. And in a sense, that's good because linoleic acid uh, is not going to convert very easily to arachidonic acid, which could be one that is more likely to make these uh, different series of higher inflammatory leukotrienes, prostaglandins, and uh, and and, uh, uh, and so forth, uh, prostacyclins, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, etc., thromboxane, all of these related compounds that are made from these fats. They're they're going to be less uh, likely to be made based on linoleic acid because the omega six necessary for those is really rooted in having arachidonic acid and our bodies do not convert short to long chain. On the negative side of that is that we can't just eat walnuts, short chain omega-3, linolenic acid, and convert over to uh, the uh, uh, long chain omega-3s, uh, eicosapentaenoic acid and docohexanoic acid, or EPA and DHA. But big picture, pulling back out, big calorie increase, Yes, refined starches and uh, fats, seed oils driving them have been the biggest issues and it is a, an issue period, and not, not, not good. But the quality likely has mitigated the risk. If it wasn't for a, a significant fraction of those fat calories being from uh, cardiovascular risk and inflammation lowering, remember, uh, we have not seen the mechanistic results of increased omega-6 from plant-based linoleic acid and seed oils associated with increased uh, actual inflammation. We see it mechanistically in a test tube, but we don't see it in humans. We see reduced risk on average of cardiovascular disease and inflammation with higher uh, fraction ratio of polyunsaturated fats to saturated fats. The problem is ratio is one thing, but we're just again going back to the whole big picture, having a mass load of extra calories and from any source, excess calories, a problem. The most confirmed intervention in modern history ever seen to reduce risk of chronic disease, cardiometabolic disease and cancer, 
and prolong life is the reduction of non-essential calories, not to starvation. There's definitely a point we've seen in studies, you can cut too much, you'll probably start to really see an effect at even 10% of calories versus our baseline. Uh, but seeing that we've gone from 2000 to uh, 2,500, so we've basically gone up uh, 25%. If we could just cut, cut back maybe 20%, and how are you going to do that? Let me leave you something actionable. How do you get full on fewer calories, stay full on fewer calories? One of the most important things we can do is remember that we eat a very consistent amount of food per day. And every individual, for, for pedagogic purposes, it's about three pounds of food a day. Now you may average a little more or less, depending if you're man, woman, and just yourself, but that amount is pretty consistent. It's hard to get people to eat, maybe cut by maybe 10% of the weight of food, the volume, if you will, by virtue of weight. And that weight is important because it's weight of food that really initiates stretch receptors in the stomach to fire that literally send a, nerve, a signal through the vagus nerve uh, retrograde up to the hypothalamus and the satiety center in our brain that we're full. So weight of food is very important for getting full. Now in terms of staying full, that's more in the realm of, of fiber and protein. But you have to remember that, you know, protein from where and what are the passengers that come with it. And that includes fiber as well, because there's a lot of processed added fibers. Now you look on an ice cream and you see fiber. Fiber only come, natural intact fiber only comes from, from plants. If you see it on an animal product, it was processed and added. And the threshold of benefit, health benefit necessary for the FDA to allow it to be called a fiber on the label is very low. So I don't, uh, I cannot get through a fiber discussion without telling you that there's gonna be things on a label from polydextrose to maltodextrin to uh, inulin, sometimes called chicory root extract. It's like, what would I don't, no, no, I don't want you to extract it from the root. I, I wanna eat the whole root of something. Uh, and then there's some that are really confusable, uh, like uh, you know, oat fiber, wheat fiber, corn fiber, which sounds good, but it's not corn bran, wheat bran, oat bran, the whole chunk of the bran, that, that husk that comes on the outside of a grain that has the, the, the nutrients that we typically remove uh, the jet, that layer and the bran layer, the outer two layers where the real nutrition density is just to leave the starchy endosperm in the middle, which is fine if it was in the whole package. And in fact, you wouldn't even absorb all the starch in the whole package because if you look at nut studies, it's very likely it's gonna be happening in whole plants of all types, whether it's a whole lentil versus even uh, you know crushed lentil soup, or certainly it's a Cheerios, uh, ver which is 100% whole, right? Made from whole, but pulverized into dust uh, versus a steel cut oatmeal that when you see the more intact it is, the more uh, whole and that you could see the, uh, the plant similar to the state in which it was taken out of the ground, you probably don't absorb all the calories. The enzymes just can't get to the nook and crannies. And uh, the 75% of calories that are absorbed uh, that you see on a label for whole almonds versus almond butter, which is 90 plus, I think 98% calories absorbed. Uh, and they've done studies actually examining stool and filtering the residue out. So we know that there is also a calorie reduction, a little bit of a calorie discount when you're eating the way that I'm describing, which is high water content foods, preferably in their whole form when it comes to plants, as often as reasonably possible because water is obviously calorie free, but that water has to be inside the food as often as, uh, as possible. It doesn't work to drink uh, water uh, with some uh, with some rice cakes and hope they turn into cooked rice cakes or drink some water with raisins and hope that they turn back into grapes. That does not work. It's not how it works. The water has to be intrinsic or inside the food and it gets there basically three ways, either through roots in the ground, like you see that tree there, you know, fruits and vegetables, not dried, and then cooked in like whole beans, whole lentils, whole uh, peas, uh, and of course, 100% whole grains with a priority in the intact forms. That means that you would count a, uh, a bulgur or a, a coarse, uh, a coarse um, uh, barley um, hulled, as they call it, not not the refined white pearl barley, uh, or a quinoa, or farro, or even brown rice uh, over a um, uh, over pasta. But still, 100% whole wheat pasta. Remember, pulverized into dust and made into funny, cool shapes like penne and elbow macaroni and so forth. Uh, then, of course, over a white pasta and white. Uh, rice, but even those white rice, white uh, pasta is going to have less calories per bite than bread and crackers because those are very dry, calorie concentrated, very light, packing uh, kind of like Trojan horse number of calories in. So dry carbohydrate, and then of course things with fat because fat is a liquid, but it's dry by virtue of it doesn't you know, oil and water don't mix. Not entirely true. Mother Nature figured out how to mix them together in an avocado, and science has f figured out how to mix them together in 
margarines like i can't believe it's uh not butter light versus regular but bottom line is that water is integrated in fact that's one science way of you of using a water integration and and mimicking nature i can't believe it's not butter light uh like uh, avocado to lower the calories per bite now i'm not saying go out and buy a bunch of i can't believe it's not butter light i'm just saying there's a bit more nuance to this in science and not everything about food processing results in typically what what typically happens which is a more calorie dense or calorie rich refined and highly processed c-r-r-a-h-p or pronounced crap food sometimes it can go in the right direction but usually what the food industry is not doing things to make things healthier with the science of processing uh and it is doing things and, and refinement it's doing things to make uh things worse more calories per bite more sodium per bite less potassium per bite less intact fiber per bite and then they try to pulverize fiber into dust and and put it into foods and say whoa look at this you know, see uh you know bars with 18 grams of fiber you're like hmm that that that, uh, that nutrition bar got 18 grams of fiber you know yeah look on the label and you'll see one of those oh they're not fake fibers but i'm gonna call them fake fibers processed added fibers technically uh and that's uh, uh refined and processed by the way added fibers again the list maltodextrin polydextrose oligosaccharides uh inulin uh, uh chicory root extract uh oat fiber wheat fiber corn fiber again not oat fi- not oat brand corn brand and wheat brand but oat fiber corn fiber wheat fiber those are all fibers i wouldn't really count but if you want to stay full getting back to the whole issue uh intact fiber from sources like whole fruits and vegetables beans lentils peas put them at the very top very high uh, very high uh, fiber to calorie ratio. And then of course, intact 100% whole grains, uh, prioritized over pulverized 100% whole grains and cooked prioritized over uh, dry, right? So now you know. So if you're, you don't, don't, don't get me into the, uh, what about shredded wheat versus white rice? One is cooked and wet, the other one's dry, but high in fiber, I would still go with the shredded wheat. And I'll tell you why it's got more chew uh, and it's uh, so uh, important to have crunch that you know i got to give you some things that are going to be more calorie dense but still nutrient dense for instance if you wanted sugar fatty i would say hey how about you take a uh you have some dried fruit and nuts and there are times i'll take a a prune and i'll stuff a walnut right inside of there uh, it's going to be sugary and fatty but the quality is still there and quality matters just like i went back to the discussion of uh, high amounts of calories from unsaturated fats versus saturated fats because there's still the potassium and uh, for blood pressure lowering, the magnesium for blood pressure lowering, and both for bone health as well, by the way. Uh, the alkaline residues in, in fruits like that for, for kidney stone risk reduction and, and osteoporosis risk reduction. Uh, there's still obviously fiber and it's a whole food, so you're not extracting all the calories. And um, what if I missed something in there? Probably the antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. Uh, so you can have a zone of foods, let's say second zone, where it's not, low, it's not lower in calorie density, not high in water but it's still high in nutrient density. And then you've got that third layer, you know, what we might call the 5% fun zone. And maybe we could go through a few other layers and make it in the fifth layer of, it doses the poison. You know, once in a great while, having a little crap is actually the spice of life. And I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying be careful and be th- thoughtful about it. So when, when you do do it, mindfully enjoy it, right? Don't go, oh, sparingly, uh, you, know, you typically see on the top of uh, food pyramids, um, you know, things that imply guilty pleasure, uh, cheat day, uh, you know, sparingly, be careful, don't enjoy yourself while you're doing it, feel bad, stress out. We say, wait a minute, if you're gonna do it, you know, as long as you're in the zone 95% of the time, an occasional 5% fun zone, or, you know, it's like cake on your birthday, hey man, enjoy. Now maybe cake on everybody's birthday is something we wanna talk about. Don't worry about that, it's overall. And I hope this gave you an overall picture. And I know I spoke fast, slow down the video. You've got that option on YouTube. You can take me down to 0.75. I wouldn't do 0.5, that just, that just doesn't work. I don't even know why they have that option on there. And then you could just rewatch it too and take some notes. But trust me, what I've just given you there is a real important pulling back, bird's eye view, forest, through the trees. We have way too many people out there who don't really know what they're talking about, cannot see the forest through the t- trees, have no idea about full picture, don't even discuss the concept. It's just too simple. To, you know, calorie is not really a calorie anymore. The first law of thermodynamics has been completely destroyed. No, it's not. There's details in the, in the inside, but you need to be, as Einstein said, you know, ex- be able to explain everything as simply as possible. 
but not simpler, right? That's the other three words that, that tail ended that. Everything should be explained as simple as possible. Um, you know, I think he said something as if a sixth grader or six year old, whatever, could understand it. If you slow this down, because I gotta get moving. So sorry, I spoke quickly. I still kept it around 15 minutes. Uh, I hope that that made sense. I love you guys. I don't care if you're watching this on YouTube. If you do, if you are on YouTube, please click like, uh, make a comment, uh, share, subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook, please, you know, click anything, love, like, hate, whatever you want, make a comment, follow the page, like, subscribe, uh, LinkedIn, wherever it is. And I hope you make it a great day, all right? The Flex 5 Lifestyle, you want to become a black belt? Simple enough. Just Google the Flex 5 Lifestyle. It's going to be number one information page and from there you take that that course 14 hours over a year you can do it in anywhere from two weeks to a year you got a whole year's access and then you get access to the private facebook community where we answer a lot of questions really detailed and don't worry soon enough there's going to be the flex five app you're going to be able to have an entire program in your pocket coach there ready to answer questions on the spot you got it okay take care bye-bye